Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to go check fruit trees that need to be, fruit needs to be, <laughs> that needs to be picked, and check some flowering trees like the uh, Garcinia humbromiana, the seashore mangosteen. I'm also going to plant a couple of seeds that I have to plant. I'm also going to check uh, my durian and other ultra tropicals because it's uh, mid 40s t this morning when I woke up and um, just check the status of those. They seem like they're okay. So anyway, stay tuned. Here it goes. So I got some uh, seeds from Anderson Tropicals that looked very interesting. One was the, uh, I just planted one. I got two of them. They're very expensive, like $25 each or something like that. Crazy, $30. Um, what's the uh, Puteria uh, bone shell, which you think when you're finding a new species or that you get a new species that you would get the indigenous name from the region you collected it from, but uh, for some reason in the U.S. we ignore all indigenous knowledge and all indigenous naming generally. Um, uh, but it would help uh, identify the, the species better if uh, you could do more research. So the more information we had on the seeds uh, that were collected probably from indigenous areas in South America because it comes from the Amazon um, uh, would help. Uh, the fruit looks really good. It's a huge seed like the size of a large uh, uh, big fruit seed and they had started rooting. I put them in some water with some compost overnight. Uh, we do not follow rules on when to plant or provide heat mat heat pads or greenhouses here in our zone of 10A and uh, I directly sow large seeds and I uh, this is standing water from the rain we got in this little ditch we have here uh, which was abnormally abnormal for this time of year to have this much rain but I have started some uh, ultra tropicals over here and they seem to be doing well. I kind of mixed up where it's going. This is a Garcinia mangostana uh, seed grown that I planted. Direct sown the seeds right there and it looks very good for a considering it's about 10 inches tall with multiple leaves on it from uh, six months has all it's been since I planted that. Here's a Garcinia Lindero seedling that looks good. And I had planted a uh, Plutonia insignis over here somewhere, but I can't really see if it's coming up yet. I have my little licula palms. So I'm going to uh, put this one over here. Here's the Garcinia gigantea amazonica. <clears throat> Probably Garcinia magnifolia would be my guess, but I'm not for sure on that one. Here's the Garcinia dulcis that's looking very good. There's our uh, Trinitoro cacao seedlings. They're looking good. They don't mind the mid 40s. In fact, they, these little trees have been down to 31 degrees, never lost any leaves. So uh, I don't see that cold being a problem. Yeah, when it is a problem is when you constantly, uh, constantly uh, placate your trees. So you keep the temperature above what the norms are and your tree never has a, an ability to adapt uh, to cold. And it's important to let the tree uh, suffer a little bit. Um, not kill it, but if you're constantly keeping it at uh, optimal uh, temperature and using heat pads and stuff, the first time the temperature drops below 50 degrees, this is a Garcinia uh, debico, probably Garcinia magnifolia, I would guess, or no, not magnifolia, macrophylla, sorry, 
Um, so I think I'm going to plant this little uh, tree right over here. And I have a little citrus that's doing well here. I have some uh, cassava, lots of cassava. I really should do a video on harvesting cassava because we have a, definitely a crop here. So I'm going to put this little seed here and it gets looks like it gets good sun so i do it just like i use the big shovel this is a very large seed so i'm planting it about uh three inches down two or three inches down and then i'm just going to close that up lift this out and close that up and that's that's it i'm going to leave this shovel here because i want to mark that so i'll come back later and put a stake so I can see how the tree does. Um, here's a, a female, or a, uh, this is a uh, Garcinia Livingstonii uh, hermaphrodite tree. I see it has some fruit on it. Um, uh, I put a bunch of manure next to it uh, to try to get it to, oh, it's got more fruit on it over here um to do a super bloom but it looks like it gave me a little partial uh bloom here and fruited for some reason this tree this this uh, hermaphrodite tree had not held fruit to maturity and i had never given it a, a uh, our fertilizer our natural organic fertilizer we use and it's our daily manure so it's grass hay with uh, zebu manure and some urine from our barn that I clean out daily. So we do micro dose of uh, micro piles of compost next to fruiting trees and trees that I want to get to fruit um, every day year round to a different tree. Uh, some trees that produce a lot, I give them extra piles so they'll get two piles, but it's like a heavily dominant in fungi. We focus on soil health here. It's one of our core principles and um, we have lots of different fungi that grow in our soil and uh, the, uh, the uh, natural organic fertilizer we use from our miniature zebus that are holistically grown uh, definitely makes tropical fruit trees increase fruit production and gets them to fruit because uh, I have practiced at a place for 12 years straight uh, gonna be 13 years coming up this well yeah in two days uh, or you know like five months we'll have it 13 years uh, so I've done it every day for the past 13 years dry farmed and over there I don't apply inputs so it's just weeds and grass with tropical fruit trees and uh, no inputs. I applied five gallons of compost one time on two and a half acres, and it, the fruit it's the fruit trees fruited, but the mangoes they produced that year, and then they produced uh, the following year a little bit, but they haven't produced since, and they've been in the ground for a long time. So it is you do have to apply. Uh, organic fertilizers and nutrients to get tropical fruit uh, production, uh, I believe. At least that's been my experience with uh, tropical fruit trees. And here's another uh, cacao seedling. There's a little uh, achachiro. We started this farm. Uh, that's a, a primo selecto achachiro from uh, Bolivia through Raul. Um, We, we have to apply, if we want fruit production, we have to apply uh, uh, zebu manure or an, a manure. And it's not in a huge quantity. It's definitely not in the quantity of nitrogen that is uh, Universal of Florida says to apply. And it's not in the maximum recommendation that the Biodynamic Association says to apply, which is 85 pounds of nitrogen, I think, per acre per year. Uh, the uh, University of Florida's nitrogen recommendations is like three times as much nitrogen as the Biodynamic Association. That's why I know that the nitrogen um, and the nutrient recommendations are not an exact science uh, because they're all over the place. 
and we only apply 29 pounds of nitrogen uh, per acre per year. So, and we get very good fruit production, but we look at the whole system. So it's the whole systems approach, which I learned through biodynamic farming. We are not biodynamic certified anymore. We are not organic certified anymore, but I follow the biodynamic farm standard, <clears throat> though I have not been applying BD 500 and I have not been applying compost. I have been making compost piles, but that's not the same thing. This little, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a, uh, some sort of tropical fruit tree that I planted here and uh, it's doing well. Um, my queen anthurium looks good. It's got a flower on it. So they don't mind being uh, in the mid forties. And from what I can see, the uh, uh, petal eye doesn't mind being in the mid forties and the cacao definitely doesn't mind. And um, neither do any of these ultra rare aeroids like the anthurium regali and the philodendron maximum and uh, the uh, uh, philodendron or the anthurium uh, waterberryanum and the philodendron gloriosum. They're just fine. They don't seem to suffer. They don't seem to wilt. They don't seem to show any signs of cold stress whatsoever. Uh, but they're in the ground. The ground here in Florida is 70, 72 degrees year round basically because the water temperature of the aquifer is that temperature. And it keeps, when you have a, uh, a living orchard floor, meaning a, a biodiverse range of plants in the system, because it's not just the manure inputs, it's a, it's a combination of uh, organic fertilizer enhancements, uh, which is the living orchard floor and biodiverse living orchard floor. And so uh, they figured uh, plants get 50% of their nitrogen uh, um, they need needs through uh, nitrogen fixation. So the nitrogen fixation is caused or is, is available because of uh, fungal nitrogen fixers and, and bacterial nitrogen fixers. And uh, these, all these, uh, these microorganisms, uh, they live in the soil and they live in particular in the root zone of plants. So that's why you have a, we have a, a completely covered orchard floor that prevents compaction from heavy rains and it prevents, prevents uh, the solarization, uh, heating up the soil and oxidizing the soil when it's really hot and the sun shining on it. And it keeps the pH in the soil at the perfect amount for, after optimal amount for that particular plant due to the biology that's in the uh, root zone of the plants. And we don't have any trouble with nematodes whatsoever. I find that bizarre that people have all these issues, but yet they're unwilling to look outside the uh, conventional farm practices that they uh, believe in uh, that is uh, basically destroying Florida and not uh, uh, the healthiest option for tropical fruit trees uh, in Florida, from what I can tell. Um, people have not been able to grow durian below 45 degrees whatsoever. They said they'll die. Well, we're pretty close to 45 and uh, the trees don't even look stressed. And it's been that already this year. And uh, they said they die. Why is, I just don't get it. Um, but it's because they don't rely on the biology, the whole systems approach, the holistic approach. I've talked about this to great extent, so I'm not going to ramp up on it, but they, as you can see, everything looks good. I got to plant that last uh, Puteria um, Spiritu Sancti. I got a uh, seed, at least this seed, they tell you the region it's from. So it's from the Spiritu Sancti region of Brazil. And this, this seed is a lot smaller, so I imagine the fruit is going to be very small. And um, it doesn't look like it's germinated or um, maybe it's got something, you know, that's in the 
the pot, but it's a very small little seed. So our cacao looks great, huh? I'm just gonna put this over here, shove it in the ground, and I'm gonna mark it. I'll do it over here with these other uh, trees that I have growing over here along this, uh, this log from the uh, guanacas tree, which is a nitrogen fixing tree. So we don't remove any sticks or stuff and we um, basically combine regenerative forms of agriculture um, like permaculture, which this is kind of mimics permaculture um uh and uh korean natural farming so we believe in indigenous microorganisms and um biodynamic farming which is the original uh form of uh, regenerative agriculture and it's probably the only true uh certifiable uh farm system that is uh Grow, can grow healthy food because uh, by, uh, organic certification uh, allows for the use of plastic mulch. And um, yeah, a couple of you pointed out that I use plastic buckets. I just haven't been able to um, re completely remove plastic from my my from using. I just it's just something I use. So the organic they let you use plastic mulch on the soil, which uh, transfers microparticles of uh, plastic directly into the soil pretty quickly, like as soon as you put it on the soil and uh, that gets uptaken into the plant and then we consume them. So organic or biodynamic doesn't allow for the use of uh, plastic mulch and they use stuff like hay and compost for mulch. Um, and they would allow anything from the farm to be used as mulch. So it's a closed loop system. This is a a uh, seedling of the uh, green sapote. And I always had trouble with the green sapote in the past um, because uh, I would just plant it with the soil that came from the nursery. And it took me a while to figure out that you need to remove the soil from the nursery or my own soil from when I start plants. I remove that, rinse the, rinse the roots in rainwater, and um, then plant it like uh, without soil, the, you know, bare root. And that's kind of solved our problem. So here's some more little cacao. There's a meringue tree, it looks totally fine. Uh, this is the, uh, the cacao is pointing at. This is a little uh, Flinia edulis. We have never done any type of protection on any of our fruit trees here. That's a bread nut tree. It doesn't seem affected by the cold weather. And definitely the cacao does it, and supposedly below 50 degrees. But I know that's not true because this is a seed grown tree from a, a tree that I fruited in Brevard County that produced fruit every year for like 10 years, eight, uh, nine years at least. And I'm not sure if it's still there anymore, uh, but it was a couple years ago and uh, it's doing well. Oh, I wanted to get that plastic bucket. <clears throat> yeah, so I haven't been able to remove plastic from my whole system. So a couple of you have pointed out uh, that uh, wanted to know how I felt about uh, stainless steel buckets. I'm, I would like to get some, I need to get some, but you know, all this stuff costs money and time to go shopping for and I just haven't done it. I still use plastic floss. I did switch over to dental floss. I, I did switch over to a bamboo Sonic Care toothbrush and it's so much better. Uh, I couldn't believe how good it was. I didn't even know they made non-plastic toothbrushes, but it's a bamboo uh, electric toothbrush, Sonic Care uh, toothbrush I bought off Amazon. And it's like, oh my God, it's so much better than the plastic one. So I have a ways to go. We all do. We all need to remove plastics from our system and I'm gonna go over and uh, and and look and see this is a Inga spectabilis tree that has flowers all over it um, that aren't opened up yet but they will we have lychee trees that are blooming right now I'm not gonna go look at the lychees I'll save that video for another day but look at all the flowers on this uh, Inga spectabilis machete ice cream bean 
It just covered. I think this is the year for our ice cream beans. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting on these ice cream beans. And maybe it's the year for our, um, it's the year for our uh, Kamitos. That's one of Oscar's giant purple Kamitos, the size of a softball, I guess. I can't wait. I have a little DPI gold. Kamito over here that's finally looks like it's growing. It just stayed at the same size forever and ever and ever. <clears throat> a lot of that is compaction. Most of my our issues here on the farm are due for, to compaction because this was a lawn for 50 years. Uh, and, uh, you know, they use mechanized machinery. It's probably the worst thing you could do to a, a growing system. Um, why that is employed as a farm management practice here in Florida to grow citrus and other tropical fruit trees is a little bizarre to me, but um, change is hard to, uh, to, uh, to instill in people. They just, they stick with what they know and they see what other people do and that's what they, that's what they think is right. And, um, uh, eventually they may uh, evolve, but we do have a nutrient. See, some creature bit this one. I'm gonna put it on the ground so they can get it. I've been eating these black sapotes every day. I've, t I've found to just love them. They're very, these are very sweet and uh, do have a chocolatey, chocolatey, uh, but, uh, like a uh, like a real fluffy like uh, brownie chocolate brownie te texture to them and taste subtle taste very subtle but they're very sweet these these dry farmed um, black sapotes and I've done a good job of not letting any of them go to waste the creatures have got quite a bit of them and. Uh, I've gotten given a lot to my friends, and there's one that's ripe. So you got to wait for that for that uh, for this to lift off. See how it lifts off? So you can see my finger under that. As soon as that happens, you can pick it. Don't pick it before then, or they will not ripen. And that one's ripe. Do that one there's some up there but i can't really get to them right now i need to bring the ladder out here so i can look at them i see some creature knock this one off uh, and i'm not sure if it's going to ripen right but looks doesn't look like it will so i'm going to leave it on the ground say uh they did it. I'm going to look at this. This is a fruiting achachira tree that currently doesn't have fruit on it, but it uh, has fruited for the last three years. And I gave it uh, two loads of daily manure because um, I wanted to see how much fruit I'm going to get. And I, I wanted to increase its chances of uh, setting more fruit. And uh, it doesn't have any new growth, so I don't see any new leaves coming out on it. So when they start sending out new leaves, the Garcinias, then they uh, then they start flowering a lot of times. This is a juicy pearl star apple. This has been a little cold sensitive from Australia. Uh, Argentium uratum. Uh, subspecies. <clears throat> but it looks good. It doesn't seem like it's affected. Uh, it's a seed grown tree and it even looks like it has new growth coming out on it. So it looks good. It was getting this vine on it from, uh, that's growing in this, uh, Inga fuiliae, which also looks like it was trying to, that looks like leaf, but I thought it was trying to bloom also, but this vine is like, oh my God. Don't ever plant it. Uh, Banisteriopsis capi. Uh, it's like an ingredient for uh, ayahuasca, but I thought it might be a good idea because I could make leaf tea out of it. 
which I do. No, it doesn't do anything to you. It just does something, but nothing that you're going to notice. One little leaf, uh, not some concoction of uh, boiled down um, uh, vine. That's how they do that. So I don't see any more. There's not really a lot of fruit left on this tree. It did have a lot of fruit on it. And I'm going to go look at the other fruit. Put this in here. Mm -hmm. Here's a little egg fruit seedling from our our uh, egg fruit that we have, egg fruit tree. I'm gonna go look at the jackfruit because the jackfruit has been very close to being ripe, and this egg fruit tree. It was quite good. It's a uh, grafted uh, Putria canistel fruit. Um, quite delicious. Uh, called Delightful. The squirrels have been chewing on my little uh, egg, uh, uh, my little uh, coconuts. Got mangoes on our tree. This buttercream tree is like totally covered in bloom, and the super Julie tree over there has got a lot of bloom on it. But this one is like very much getting ready to do a full bloom. I love buttercream. Uh, they have huge, giant mangoes. This little jackfruit tree has fruit all over it. All of our jackfruit trees have little fruits and flowers all over them that are of size. Here's a sugarloaf mango that's covered in fruit or flower. There's a, a super julie, it's got full flower and it's, it's flowering uh, all over itself. <clears throat> a lot of people have had trouble with uh, Spanish lime in cold, but this, this Spanish lime tree, it's quite large, so it is not fruiting. Um, it's a grafted tree, so it should produce fruit on its own. Uh, and it, uh, it's never been affected. It never got affected by 31 degrees, never been affected by frost. Um, but we do focus on a multi... Uh, uh, management, multi-systems management, uh, holistic management practice. Here's another sugarloaf mango. This mango did already give me a huge bloom, but it didn't set any fruit, but now it's re-blooming, which is good. This is a, uh, a uh, Venus mango that has uh, flowers all over it, and it had a more fruit on it, but the the rain, the rain knocked a bunch of it off, but it still has fruit on it, and it looks like it's going to have more fruit. It's an evergreen uh, type of uh, uh, awapui type ginger. Zingiber. There's a Venus mango that's uh, getting ready to do a super bloom. It's like going to be covered in uh, bloom. My vegetable garden, which is doing good. It's, uh, I should have, uh, I should have put some more seeds out here, but I didn't. Uh, I just planted this greens and then I've been doing some squash. I got some egg corn squash. I see the rabbits have been in here uh, eating my leaves and stuff, but it's got some egg corn squash. And I got some butternut squash growing over there and some more uh, honey nut squash, or is it honey nut? Some other squash over there. I'm gonna put some cilantro seeds in here. Um, hopefully I'll get some cilantro out of it. But here's that sweet tart mango. Looks good. Getting ready to do a big bloom. This is a diamond mango. Here's this jackfruit that's like covered in fruit uh, and flowers still. 
and it seems kind of an odd time of year for our jackfruits to be flowering and fruiting, but um, I guess not ready. Um, they're, uh, they just do what they want to do, and uh, it seems okay. Looks like some of them have dropped off here, but maybe I should cut the fruit off. I don't know. I'm just going to let it do its thing and, and see where it takes me, see what kind of fruit it gives me. Let me go look at the black sapote. The other tree that has fruit on it. And uh, go look at the Garcinia hombromiana. This is a Venus tree that looks like it's it's just now starting to flower. I had the best sapodilla from my friend Frank. It was some pumpkin-shaped sapodilla. I like them when they're a little uh, gritty, grainy. I don't like the smooth texture of the sapodillas when there's no grit to them. I like them with a the little grit. Uh, and it was like perfect, perfect freaking sapodilla. It was so yummy. Uh, as good as a cherimoya for sure. And it was very big. And I, I'm gonna plant the seeds. He gave me uh, seedlings of it. So I will have uh, fruit trees of that type. Though I'm not sure if sapodillas uh, come true to seed. <clears throat> I haven't experimented with sapodillas, but uh, I like that, that uh, fruit he gave me. In fact, I think it was my favorite sapodilla fruit I've had. Um, we got plenty of star fruit on our trees again. Uh, star fruit never stops. It's kind of like guava here. It just keeps going and going and going. And I like it. Well, I don't, I don't really eat it anymore because it causes highs in me. So I, I forgot I couldn't make tea for like two days for some reason. All my pots were being used. It was like during Christmas time and everything, all this cooking was going on and I, I needed to make tea and I couldn't because I didn't have a pot big enough. So I thought, oh, I'll just go a couple days without making my fruit leaf teas. And my highs started coming back by not drinking my tea. So I was like, I have to make tea today. So I went out and <clears throat> made my, uh, picked my uh, 40 plus fruit leaf teas, for fruit leaf for teas, uh, a chachiro for one of them, and was one of them. And <clears throat> as soon as I drank it, like almost instantaneously, the, in the itching stopped. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but it's kind of bizarre. And I do, uh, uh, I think I need to eat them consistently or drink the tea consistently. To prevent highs, which is so bizarre because I never had highs in my life until I, I went off my 100% clean vegan organic diet for five days <clears throat> and then I developed all these issues so this guanabinite tree looks okay usually this thing will drop its leaves when it gets this cold but when you do a little compost piles near it it does affect the uh, the temperature you know because they generate heat um, this is a peach cobbler mango that's not even trying to bloom yet There's an orange sherbet mango that's not trying to bloom yet. There's a, another Ingus spectabilis. Here's a uh, Puturia. Uh, I, I forget which one it is. It's one of the rare ones. Rare ones. My friend Frank gave it to me. I'm going to go look at that other Puturia torta glabra that I planted that did not look that good. Uh, last time I looked at it and um, see what it looks like just you know just to see hopefully it hasn't lost all its leaves or if it has it's <clears throat> it's uh, some of our citrus that looks so good here's a little uh, 
Oh, I thought it was a mulberry at first. <laughs> Wrong. It's just a biddens. But there is a mulberry in there. I can't see it at the moment. It's too small. Um, okay, where was that? It's right here. I put a stake next to it because I want to be able to look at it. And I don't see it over there, which is not a good sign. Um, not a good sign at all. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. It did drop its leaves. It looks green. Um, but in all fairness, the stem is still green. It looks okay. Uh, this... This tree did look a little haggard when I put it in the ground um, and the leaves were already yellow. So it looks like, I mean, it's still hanging on to that leaf. I'm going to go look at the other one over here just because I know that it's been in the ground a while and it uh, went through a long period of not looking good and then it started looking good. This wampy is looking okay. Just have to look at the other um, Puteria torta glabra that has been on the ground a while that the rabbits were chewing on. Don't really have a rabbit problem getting all my plants, but they seem to get the ones that I'm most concerned about. And it looks, no, it's doing good. Yeah, it's right here. New leaf, new leaf. Uh, it looked like it had a new leaf coming out there, but it's a rabbit had chewed it, that's all. So it looks good, it's got new leaves on it. And that one has been in the ground uh, for a long time. So there's a little uh, meringue that I stepped on, looks good. <clears throat> I'm gonna look at the Humbrowniana, then I'm gonna look at the Garcinia, or the, <laughs> I'm gonna look at the uh, <clears throat> There's an egg fruit, or a bread net. I'm gonna look at the, uh, I'm gonna go pick the, the uh, fruit off the uh, the black sapote tree. I, mean, I should probably check the Garcinia madruno because it had fruit on it that has been ripening all winter. So it's nice to get fruit here year round, which is kind of what we do every day. We can get fruit. Um, probably the bananas. I have some that can pick. There's another bread nut tree. It looks good. And effect, it's growing right next to this little achache uro tree. I have a lot of achachiros. We have about 500 of them, all varying sizes. Mostly uh, seed grown, uh, but we have about uh, 40 nursery started trees, and then we have one fruiting tree, and then we have about, I would say, five trees that are very close to being able to fruit at the moment. There's a little citrus growing here, and there's a little egg fruit growing here, and there's a little Garcinia lindero growing there. There's a bread nut tree growing here. Here's a, uh, this is a bread nut, bread, uh, fruit, uh, bread nut. This is an oil nut tree, not bread nut, oil nut tree growing here. This is a uh, male, uh, I think it's a Hombromiana, but it has pink flowers, so. Uh, it's starting to flower, I see. It, see, it's getting new leaves. Uh, it's gonna start flowering. See how red the leaves are on this particular one coming out? I mean, they're like very red. It's different than my our other Hombromi on a tree. Uh, I wanna see if there's any flower buds on it. But I don't see any flower buds. I don't see new growth anywhere else, but I'm sure that those new leaf points are going to have flowers. And I'm gonna go over here right, like this. This is a flower I could see forming here, right there. I could see a little flower bud started. Um, so it's starting. I want it to bloom at the same time as our female Garcinia hombromiana, which is right there, which has a flower on it. And this is Garcinia gardneriana, 
There's about 15 different uh, species of Garcinia trees. And this uh, is the female Garcinia humbromiana, the seashore mangosteen. And I was by here the other day making a video and I saw that it has a flower on it getting ready to open. And you can see the flower is quite large, gonna be large. That's because it's like a perfect flower. I'm fairly certain that this female tree is gonna be able to produce fruit even without pollination. So um, it looks like it's starting to uh, leaf out over here. You can see that the, the new leaves are not nearly as red as the that one with the red, red um, uh, flower uh, on it. And I'm trying to see if there's any more. I gave it two nice piles of manure like a while ago. Not that long ago, but I knew that it was, it's going to start flowering in the spring or late winter and, uh, or in winter. And I wanted to give it a advantage because last year it did not flower, which surprised me. But last winter we had a severe drought and it was a drought that had been followed by a summer drought. So it's got new leaves coming out there but I don't really see any more flowers on it, but I can tell it's getting ready to flower quite well because all these new uh, growth points are started and it flowers at its tip, unlike uh, the Achachiro or the uh, Intermediate or the Gardneriana or the uh, Brasiliensis or the uh, MB. They all, they all fruit on the stem and the, the trunk not on the leaf tip or the tip of the the this the branch. So I don't see any other flowers on here. Here's my other daily pile of new manure. Uh compost pile basically. Alright, let me look at the Hombromiano, then I'm gonna go pick the the uh I don't know, that's not ready. These little uh, Brasiliensis and the Gardneriana, they have some fruit on them. Um, they're not ripe yet. I gave them all a pile of manure just because I know that it does cause plants to fruit and hold fruit. Uh, it just, it just does. It's not really manure, it's like a compost pile. And this does have a ripe fruit on it, I see. Um, I wonder how much other fruit is on here. It kind of has been giving me a little fruit every week or so. Not a lot, but a little bit. But I gave it a pile of manure recently. Like, uh, there's rules against applying manure and then selling the fruit to the public. It's got a little fruit on it. The fruit are usually like twice the size, but I'll take a small fruit over no fruit. Um, the fruits are not... I love the tree, I love the fruit, but they're not like a super sweet dessert fruit. They're more uh, medicinal type fruit, so they taste very citrusy, lemony. They're kind of t tart. The sweet version of this is Garcinia acuminata, and it's round. It doesn't resemble a lemon like this. And there it is. It's like there's three seeds in there, probably two decent ones and then one. I had, uh, Frank's, Frank was by here and they brought somebody that said that the uh, fruit, uh, the skin was quite delicious or good. Oh. <laughs> It's not, it's horrible. But everyone has their own taste. Anyway, so, not a lot of fruit. I'm very tart, like a lemon. Don't buy it for $40 each or whatever they charge. Not save your money by the seeds. I mean, if you have to and you can afford that kind of money uh, on one little tiny fruit of Garcinia madruno, then have at it. But 
it's not worth the wait. You're better off just buying some seeds and growing your own, getting it to fruit, because it does fruit rather quickly. It's like a intermediate. And uh, other lemon drop mangosteens, I would consider this a lemon drop type mangosteen. <clears throat> it just tastes like a lemon. It's, I mean, it, that's what it tastes like. Highly medicinal, lots of bioactive compounds in it and all the other Garcinias. This is a, a, a Garcinia cross. So I think it's Garcinia gardneriana cross with uh, Brasiliensis, but it's a sweet fruit. And the only thing that gave it away is the leaves are so different than all the other. Uh, they're more like a chachiro. Um, than a, a intermedia and it has different types shaped leaves all over it and that's how I figure it's got to be a, like a, a hybrid of some sort and the fruit is sweet and you can eat the skin and all it's quite good but it only fruits once a year like the other lemon drop mangosteens fruit multiple times a year it has given me off-season fruit but it doesn't like there's an achachero. Um, it doesn't produce fruit in abundance. Uh, all like the intermedia or uh, the Garcinia madruno year round. Uh, it's just one big crop and then nil. There's a, a little tiny uh, sugarloaf mango that's trying to produce fruit. It's got flour on it right now. my bucket go over and get my black sapotes this is an orange sherbet mango i love orange sherbet mangoes it's like one of my favorite little trees it's like a dwarf tree or not like a dwarf tree it has been a dwarf tree for us and it's a super producer and fairly disease resistant and stays small and compact but produces so much fruit that's like superior to most other varieties of fruit of mango trees uh, here's a little sapodilla seedlings I planted of that one I was talking about that's so delicious. They look good. There's a, a Miko lemon. There's a cashew seedling there. We have about 200 cashew uh, uh, trees uh, uh, started now. Uh, there's a little sapodilla seedling that I planted. Um, uh, the cashews, somebody wanted uh, to know if we, they could buy seedlings or uh, seeds. We don't sell fruit trees we're not a nursery we only sell fruit or seeds so we have a seed license but no nursery license uh, probably we could make money selling trees but I just I'm not into uh, having a nursery here's a buttercream mango that's like covered in uh, bloom that's just getting ready to start the entire tree is covered the bananas are looking good Everything seems fine. It seems totally unaffected by the cold. Uh, no problemo. Here's the uh, black sapote I was looking looking at. Put those seeds in there, that madruno. I figure we have about 30 plus madruno trees started now because we just got so many uh, seeds uh, from our own tree started. And they all seem to germinate which is nice. So this is a Bernicke tree, the other black sapote that I got a fruit off of was a uh, um, a Black Beauty's black sapote. So I see one right here. And they're little, they don't have seeds in them for some reason. Some of them do, but most of them do not, which is kind of nice. I'm going to plant a bunch of our seeds we have from our fruit trees. I know that uh, there's been talk that they uh, you have to have a grafted tree because they could be uh, male trees and you won't get any fruit off them. But I know my friend Frank has grown them from seed and they produce fruit. So uh, he hasn't mentioned that they're male trees. Um, I would just take the chance. I should look at this little, uh, this is like a giant fruited Cattleya type guava. I can't forget the, the, 
mountain cherry or something like that. Or, I don't know, I forget what it was. But it's a beautiful little uh, guava tree, I love it. Does the leaves kind of look like a, a, a catway guava, but not right. This is a seedling uh, black sapote. It flowered for the first time this past year, but did not set fruit. Uh, there's a big achachiro tree right there. Um, this achachiro has never received any water and it was planted in full sun from the nursery. And of, of all our nursery trees, other than the one that was uh, is fruiting now, this is the only one that was never given any supplemental water ever. And it's it was planted in full sun. It's the largest uh, of all the second uh, group of there's a Florigon mango that's got bloom on it. Second fruiting Achachiro trees, you know, are, are the next set that's gonna start fruiting. Eventually we'll get there with the Achachiro uh, fruit for sale grove, but we're not quite there yet. I did sell some Achachiro fruit this past year though, or 2023, I guess is still going on. Um, I don't see these being ripe yet. But it's good to know that I have more fruit on these trees because I need it. I like it. Notice I'm not offering, uh, pushing it for sale. People don't really want uh, black sapote fruit um, unless they've had it before and then they seem to all want it. But I don't see these fruits being ripe yet. So I got two little fruit. I still have a couple more in my refrigerator that need to be eaten and on the counter. So I'm not totally fruitless when it comes to black sapote. I had been eating two a day for a long time. Um, I was hoping to get some ripe fruit, but it could ripen up again tomorrow. So <clears throat> there's always tomorrow when it comes to tropical fruit. You never know. I guess I could check some bananas. There's a banana over here I want to check. So the small racks of bananas is due to the removal of pups. This is one that I just transplanted. It looks good for, you know, just transplanting it there at that size and not removing any of the leaves. Um, but I had a rack in here I wanted to look at. <clears throat> I notice there's guavas coming up everywhere now, and I have a feeling a lot of them are from from uh, fruit trees, or from our fruit, off our tree uh, that, uh, this giant tree here that produces pretty much year round, though it is kind of in a lull, but I know there's some fruit on it, but it's a huge tree. Um, there's some bananas there. There's a little guava there. We have about 10 different types of guavas. We don't have any issues with nematodes here, but we do apply manure and focus on uh, the whole system. 401 bananas we have that I've divided. It's uh, quite uh, nice. And I know I saw a little rack over here. I'm trying to remember where it was. Right here it is. Oh yeah, I see it. A little tiny rack of bananas. I'm gonna go in there and look at it. Try not to step on anything because I think I planted some. Yeah, it's not not ripe yet. This is one of our mangoes that froze. Uh, this is a mango that had froze. Uh, they seem to be getting big. Uh, two years ago, we got a 31 degree uh, freeze, and um, it affected like 25 or 30 of our grafted trees. That's a a. a Orange sherbet mango. That's a super julie mango. These aren't flowering over here. Uh, this is a Juliet mango. They didn't get affected by the freeze. So out of 285 trees, like 30 of them or 25 got affected. So we still have grafted trees. We still have more than 250 grafted trees that were not affected by freeze that produce fruit. Our oldest is only six years old and most of them like this tree here, are just four years old in January, this January. 
um, from a small three gallon and have never been watered. And they produce lots of fruit because of how we manage our uh, farm for soil health. And we use uh, small uh, organic natural fertilizer inputs daily uh, in the form of uh, zebra manure, uh, hay and pissed on hay from our cows from the barn because I lock them up at night. We had coyotes around here the other night that were howling and woke us up and had to come out and ch check the cows, but they were in the property across the street, which they're developing into a uh, um, million dollar McMansions on four or four or five acre lots. <clears throat> I'm sure it's gonna be outrageously expensive. Crazy. Here's a Kizar mango. These are, I think, probably was my favorite mango in 2023. It was very close. Uh, we have lots of good top tier mangoes, but that we have two Kizar trees. There's a sapodilla, Cassia sapodilla. That's got a lot of fruit on it. That's not quite, it's not even close, most of it. Um, here's our jackfruit tree, another uh, jackfruit that's like got, uh, uh, flowers all over it and it's just crazy how much bloom is on these jackfruits uh, here it is the 30th of October I mean uh, December October just look at these mushrooms anyway this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. This is Florida Natural Farming. And that's a video on our holistic approach to growing uh, food for us naturally and naturally farmed and natural organic fertilizers we use and fruit harvests we have December 30th, 2023. Have an excellent day. Please like, share, subscribe, or comment if you enjoy this content. Thanks for watching.